it's good to be here. Uh, ICTP is a very nice place. And, okay, that's uh, what I'm going to talk about. And I'll try to give some motivations for the final theorem. Okay. Uh, so, let me start mentioning this classical result from the 70s, 60s. Uh, Anozov proved that Anozov, what is now known as Anozov, geomorphisms uh, are periodic. I'm assuming things are regular now. And, okay, talking about the ergodicity, I mean volume preserving, okay? And the, uh, one of the main ingredients of the proof is uh, is the what we call absolute continuity of the stable and unstable foliations. Okay. Um, let me just make sure we are, just quickly remind, I think, up to now we all are familiar with the definitions, but remember the Anozov is the tangent bundle has this splitting. And the derivative contracts in this direction, expands there. And since I'll be using partially hyperbolic, let us recall that for the partially hyperbolic, it's similar, but we have that center direction, OK? Uh, all right, and also we have associated for the stable and unstable directions, the stable foliation and unstable foli foliations. And for the context I'll be working, if I say center foliation, it's because it will exist in my context, okay? It has been discussed in some previous uh, lectures that it doesn't always exist, but it might, in the context I'll be working, it does, so, <coughs> um, okay. What else? Uh, the absolute continuity, what is absolute continuity of a foliation is, uh, I want to, give a, a, a definition, not using, I can use holonomies, but I want to give the definition which is close to what I'm going to use, which is involves disintegration of a measure. So briefly, uh, let me tell you what is disintegration. Well, recall that, for instance, if we were consider the square and consider the horizontal lines, if I give you a set A and I ask you to calculate the volume of A, that's how you do it. You consider, I'll call lambda x as the the bag measure on the, so it's the, the length, okay? I'll use like y here, y. <coughs> so you compute the length of uh, a, each horizontal, and then you integrate. That's how you do it. Okay, it turns out that we can uh, do a similar thing when we were working with Foliations that are, you know, doesn't need to be as regular as this horizontal. It's not a, a Fubini thing. We call it, it's uh, 
roughly in this integration. Put Rockling, the integration, which is the following. Now consider a foliated box. So oh, it's similar to that. And then now the leaves are a little bit like this. Okay. And then I want you to calculate the volume of a given set. Okay. A. So the Rockland disintegration theorem states the following, that we have, similar to that, we have on each, I'll use uh, C now, we have for each leaf, we have a measure which I'll call like mu uh, C, and volume of A will be I will integrate with respect to these measures, the set A, and I will integrate with respect to, I'll use like this, uh, volume hat, where uh, volume hat is the projection of volume. So what is pi? Pi is from the square to sigma. So it's just the projection through the, the leaf. Okay? So Rockland disintegration theorem. So you can see that it's okay, very similar. The thing is that now we're doing what we do with Fubini, but for general uh, foliations. Okay. And by absolutely continuous, now we can define. So I say that uh that a foliation F is absolutely continuous if, so when I disintegrate it on a foliated box, the, these measures, which are the conditional measures, uh, are conditional measures, they are equivalent to the so I use, I'll keep this notation for the Lebesgue measure. They are equivalent uh, with the Lebesgue measure of the leaf. Okay? So that means, in some sense, that when a foliation is absolutely continuous, it's kind of like uh, has a similar behavior uh, as this horizontal. For instance, a set of, a set of full measure will intersect almost all the leaves in a set of Lebesgue full measure of the leaf. Okay. Um, all right. So the spirit... Okay. So these are the definitions so far. Well, what's the spirit of the talk? It's, it's, it's uh, from this theory, what happens is we used uh, some knowledge of the behavior of the invariant foliations to obtain some dynamical uh, consequence, in the case, ergodicity. So we want to see how the invariant foliations interact with the dynamics. That's one example. Uh, a more concrete, this is, you know, like a, a vague, that, that's the spirit. And then uh, another example is a conjecture. Example in the spirit is a conjecture. I'm not so sure who to give it credit for, but it's around. It's that if the stable and unstable foliations of an anosov different homomorphisms are smooth, Then uh, the diffel F is smoothly conjugate to its uh, linearization, to its uh, linear analysis. 
As you might know, the, so an analysis of DFO is conjugate to a linear one. So the conjecture is if you have enough conditions on the stable and unstable, you can make the conjugacy very good. So the conjugacy is, in fact, smooth. Sorry? If that would imply? Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if I quite get it. You want to meet? Yeah. Ah, I don't know. So as far as I know, I could just mention the theorem for the conjecture for on a torus. And as far as we know, people just proved for T2 and with some conditions on T4. That's all they had. So the conjecture, we can say, it, oh, it's on T4. It's on Tn, on the torus. OK. And, but the thing is just to mention, OK, do some conditions on the foliations, give some uh, information on the dynamics. And, <clears throat> all right, but in our case, we are, let me give you another uh, thing to, you know, inspire the philosophy, which is, now let's go to the partially hyperbolic context, which is, um, let me state a theorem from, Avlaviana Wilkinson, which is uh, states the following: If we consider F uh, a perturbation of the time one of um, geodesic flow. On a surface of negative curvature, uh, then only two things can happen. So the thing is, the first observation is that F is a partially hyperbolic, and because it's the perturbation of the time one, it also has the center fo a center foliation. And the thing is, so. If you consider F, uh, well, everything that will appear here will be volume preserving. Preserving. Um, then only two things can happen. The first one is, if the center foliation is absolutely continuous, then you have, I'll call it rigidity. Uh, then if you have this information in the center foliation, you have a very strong thing, you know a very strong thing, that F is indeed a time one of uh, another flow. Okay, and if the center foliation is not absolutely continuous, Then you have some, if you see it for the first time, it seems like a uh, weird behavior, uh, which I'll call it FC has atomic uh, disintegration. Atomic disintegration is, I'll just say in a, because I want to talk about the rigidity, I'll just say it in, uh, I'll put it here like the atomic is just, if you look at a foliated box and then there is a set A, I'll say a full measure, okay, things normalize. So there is a set A, a full measure, which intersects each leaf in, let us say, two points. So 
So that, that's strange. You have a set of full measure, but intersects each leaf in, let's say, two points or one point. Uh, okay, that's atomic disintegration. Okay, uh, but the thing is, it's a good description for this, uh, for this dynamics concerning the knowing the behavior of the, the center foliation. Uh, and then we can ask, well, for, does this kind of behavior happen for some other types of partially hyperbolic? And, oh. <laughs> And the, so the, another important class is what we call uh, derived from a Nozov. So I'll say that F is, I'll just put like derived from a Nozov if F is partially hyperbolic and so we have the linear Nozov and F is homotopic to a linear anosov. This is what we call derived from anosov, from derived from a, a linear anosov. Okay, <coughs> these uh, they have a they have a good relation. Is that at, they are semi conjugate, uh, so known as Frank's Manning. So my conjugacy is that there exists H such that F A Okay. Um, so I want to investigate the rigidity uh, concerning this kind of partially hyperbolic, and well, somehow the, here it's appearing, you know, to talk about the rigidity, I have to relate it somehow to, for instance, to some dynamics, and I want to see how strong some conditions, to see how strong or how good the semi-conjugacy is. That, that will be the goal. Uh, but let me mention first that the... Thus, these uh, partially hyperbolic, they have a richer behavior when compared to that one. So, the derived from an of they have a richer behavior because uh, what can happen is that the center foliation can be, well, it's a, Easy thing is that it can be the disintegration, I'll say disintegration can be uh, equivalent to Lebesgue. This is just a simple case, for instance, the linear Anosov. This is the foliation, so lines. Uh, but they also have that uh, behavior over there, which is the atomic, I just put atomic disintegration. This was done with uh, Gabriel Ponce, Ali Tazibi, and it also has another one, which I'll just call it neither, which is, in fact, the disintegration can be, it's, it's neither atomic nor, and it's singular with respect to Lebesgue. Okay, but the thing is, um, today I wanna talk about things concerning the rigidity and if you allow me some prejudice in the talk is, I will say that the good measure is the Lebesgue measure, just in this talk, to say that, uh, okay, this, uh, the difference that have this um, behavior, the, the foliations, you know, they are not as well behaved as we want, and maybe 
uh, they derive from an Ozov that have good uh, disintegrations. They, you know, might, let's say, they, these are good foliations. Um, so, in the same spirit as that theorem, I might ask, does, you know, does good behavior might imply any information in the semi-conjugacy, for instance? Uh, see, if, if you compare here, we could still ask, for instance, does, if the center foliation for the derived from an Ozov is absolutely continuous, then do we have, I don't know, smooth semi-conjugacy or something like this? Uh, the thing is, the, the A have, it has a richer behavior for the center foliation and also has a different behavior concerning the, this rigid way of approaching. Uh, so let me state a theorem which is says the following, that there exists F, uh, once again, everything volume preserving, volume preserving. Uh, but then uh, now, on the three tours, volume preserving the A, with the center foliation being a C1 foliation, but F not C1, conjugate to its linear part to, I'll just say A. Okay, so if I have a C1 foliation, when I look at the foliated box and I disintegrate it, the leaves, then the disintegration is, because the foliation is C1 actually, so the disintegration will have a density with respect to the Lebesgue measure of the leaf, and in particular, the, the density is very good. It's, uh, it's C1. And, um, okay, even if with a very good, this is much better than only absolute continuity, even if with a very good disintegration, we do not obtain, for instance, uh, you know, smooth conjugacy or something. That's, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, let me also mention a, a, a property of a, this foliation. It's, now, consider this C1 foliation. The, when we fix a foliated box, the for, I'll say, so we fixed the foliated box, then the densities, they are, you know, fix this, there exists a constant, and the densities, they are limited from uh, below and above. But a priori, it, it, it doesn't mean that with the same K, we c or we could find a K, it doesn't mean that we can find a K, that it works for, for all, uh, for, for any foliated box, okay? So there is, uh, now I will follow here a definition from which they define, they define the uniform version of the absolute continuity, which is, I'll call, uh, so the uniform, so I'll say that definition, I'll say that F has the Uniform bounded density property if if the following 
uh, happens. There exists, so I'm, there exists K uh, such that, and then now it depends for, I'll put for all foliated box, I disintegrate, I disintegrate volume on those leaves. And the disintegration is uh, has a density with the the bag measure. I'll just put hat here to emphasize when I disintegrate the disintegration. This is always a probability for the way I use the Rockland disintegration. So probability. So I, I'm considering the normalized. Lebesgue measure. So the definition is the foliation has the UBD property if it doesn't matter the the box I consider there exists this K such that the the densities are uniformly bounded. So uh, this is. The, the, so this is the uniform, we can see it as the uniform version of the absolute continuity. Okay, it turns out that in the end, this is just the right uh, condition for rigidity in the context of derived from an Ozov uh, So, so this the theorem I wanted to state is that the, the goal theorem is this one. So F in the three torus volume preserving uh, derived from an Ozov, then F is smoothly conjugate to A, I'll put A, okay, A, the linearization, if and only if the center foliation has the UBD property. So that is the condition that finally gives the, the rigidity, the type of rigidity we're looking for. And so it's very important to have this example in mind. So even if with a good uh, foliation, we do not obtain conjugacy. So this here, the UBD property, it's a, it's a measurable property. It, C1, it's you know, something that holds everywhere. This we substitute as you know, similar to the absolute continuity. And the difference with also the C1 is that it is not guaranteed, although, although at first it does seem that it would be, but it is not guaranteed that we can make the, the densities uniformly bounded. So this, if you see with the, what Avla Vienna Wilson did for the geodesic flow, that is the, the similar result for these partially hyperbolic. Uh, how, how much? Like one minute. Uh, I'll just state something that the, concerning the proof, the steps of the proofs has to do with we have to construct good conditional measures. I'll just say like good conditional measures. Such that they have the following uh, uh, characteristic. The push forward of them, it's the 
have this relation, but we can construct these conditional measures in such a way that they have uh, uniform bounded densities. Now, this is the Lebesgue of the whole measure. They have uniform bound densities uh, with the Lebesgue measure. So, if you see, if we iterate, we do, we get this. Here we are getting the exponent of the center direction. If you consider the derivative of these measures, some Jacobian will be appearing, and then we will be able to obtain Lyapunov exponents. And from Lyapunov exponents, we will obtain Lyapunov exponents for every point. And from that, we will have periodic data. And from that, we can use Gogolev's result and prove smooth conjugacy. OK, that's it. Thanks.